There are three parts to my argument. One, the technology. It has its own momentum. Having started it in motion, we've got to see it through. Two, no point in talking about positive technology or negative technology. All technology is inextricably interlinked. Three, for maximum growth, technology needs wars. If there aren't any wars, you have to invent them. We cannot afford the risk of major war, but people have to be made to feel that war is happening or is just about to happen. All this so that technology might be fulfilled. Joseph Brown, born in Glasgow, Scotland, 1945, Docker. Redundant, 1980. Agnes Brown, born Paisley near Glasgow, 1951, housewife. Gary Brown, born Glasgow District, 1982, computer literate. Glasgow District, 1984, computer literate. sources have confirmed that the United States orbit missile guidance satellite Space Eagle has been knocked off course by being bumped by a moving object, the nature and source of which remains to be established. A White House spokesman has emphasized that should the moving object prove to have been of Soviet origin, this will be treated by the United States as an act of war. A statement from the Kremlin denies all knowledge of the incident, which is the fourth case of satellite bumping to happen this year. Satellite bump. Whatever will they think of next? note the appoggiatura in bar six where you are tending to rush a bit. Okay, I'll take it from the end of bar four. Anne? Anne? Yes, Mother? Come through and let me do your hair. But you've already done it today. I, I know, I know, but I've changed my mind. I think I'll put it in bunches. Oh, all right. Bunches? Joe? Joe! Why don't you hear me when I talk to you? Joe! What's wrong? Your father's in one of his dwams again. All right, I'll talk to him. Father. Father. What's going on? You've just been in one of your dwams again. That's what's going on. Sitting there, staring into space. I must have been thinking about something. If God had meant you to think Joe Brown, he'd have given you a brain. Come here, Anne. Really, Father, it's very worrying. You should try and keep yourself busy and occupied. Otherwise, one of these days you'll drift off and you won't come back. And just look at those postcards. Why didn't you sort them out like I asked you? They haven't been touched. How long is it since we had a holiday? What's a holiday? Last time was after Gary was born. Do you not remember? We used the money we got for having him. Oh, yes. 
Where was it we went? Mortal Village. Oh. We haven't been anywhere since then. No. After Anne came was when the terrorists were mining the roads, and that put us off the notion of travelling altogether. Now do you remember? Oh, yeah. That's right. So it did. I don't know what you're thinking about holidays for. You never do anything anyway. Oh, it would be nice to have a change. Dad, can I have some money? What do you want money for? I'm going out later. Where? To the club. Where else? Daddy, don't be impudent. Well, why is it every time I go there's a cross-examination? Your father's just concerned about you, that's all. I'm away to do the weights. Uh, you be careful and don't overdo it. Well, what about the money? You'll just have to wait till I draw some. Oh, bloody hell. Gary. It was me. They're always fighting. Still, boys will be boys, as they say. You know, you really have got lovely soft hair, Anne. It's just like your grandmother's. Tell me about Grandma again, Mother. What was she like? She was a lady. And what does that mean? Well, it means she ran a household, but she never soiled her hands with work. Tell me about work, Mother. What was it like? Was it like Gary and I doing the computer? In the old days, there was all kinds of work. You could scarcely imagine how many different kinds there were. Tell me about it, Mother. You know, I love to hear about the good old days. Still sulking? Makes me sick. We're the ones that earn the money in this family, so why should we have to go cap in hand when we need some? He's our father. So what difference does that make? He's supposed to have control over the family finances. Oh, don't give me that, Anne. You know as well as I do, that crap's outmoded. By the way, your hair looks ridiculous. Thanks, big brother. <laughs> well, I don't know why you let her do it to you. She's my mother, and it keeps her amused. You shouldn't encourage her. She needs to adjust. She's too old-fashioned. I like her being that way. What? Decrepit? She is your mother, Gary. So what difference does that make? Don't you know? All I know is if she keeps on drinking the way she's doing, she won't be around to worry us for much longer. Has she been at it again? She's always at it. She's reached the chronic stage. It's a wonder Father doesn't notice. Ah, well, he doesn't notice anything. What's it today? Co-op wages. I don't believe in all this computer restraint business. We've got to leave ourselves something to do. If we've got the technology, we might as well use it. this morning. No? What? A list of extinct species. Makes me so sad when I think of all those creatures that we'll never see. <laughs> Makes me furious. That was father's generation. Poisoned the land, polluted the atmosphere, vacuumed the sea. Not a thought for the future. There's a discrepancy showing. Oh, sorry, that was my fault. Uh, let's go back to the top of the page. Okay. What are you two up to? Working. You call that working? <laughs> you don't know the meaning of the word. I came in to draw some money. Do you want me to do it for you? That's all right. I can manage. I'll be the date. Joe Brown can't lift his own money. <laughs> it's not working. Let's see. Well, it seems okay to me. What are you punching in? Ah, ah. That. Ah. <laughs> no, that is just the card number. You don't put that in, stupid. I'll do it for you. 
Ray, how much do you want to withdraw? A hundred. A hundred? What do you want all that for? That's my business. Just get on with it. There you are. Now, if you press that button there, you get your money. Thanks. I know that much. Uh, here's ten to yourself. You just put it over there, I'll get it later. Good night yourself tonight, Father. Uh, I thought I might just go down to the pub for a couple of pints to relieve the monotony. Naughty, naughty. <laughs> if I sit around here much longer, I'll go senile before my time. Well, oh, don't drink too much. You know how it makes you feel afterwards. And how much it costs. That's all right. Don't worry, I won't be gone for long. And Gary, remember, same thing with you. Straight home tonight after the club. No loitering. Don't be out in the streets after dark. Do you hear me? Yes, Dad, I hear you. Well, then, remember. Let's not have a repeat of last week's carry-on. He's right, he is gone, you see now. He's only in his fifties. Well, senility is getting earlier these days. Did you see him trying to punch in those figures? Talk of an extinct species. Gary, we've got to find something constructive for him to do. There's nothing for him to do, he's useless. A big man like him must be good for something. A big man like him? Nowadays, physical bulk goes for nothing. A pea brain in a massive body lumbering on to final extinction. He's a dinosaur. You shouldn't talk like that about your own father. Just being objective. Ah, there she goes, straight for the bottle. Who? Mother. Gary, you're spying on her. Well, just for a behavioural report. Well, it's just like studying apes. Well, you know what I think? I think we should report the two of them and have them put into a home where they could be properly looked after. Don't say things like that, Gary. Why not? Just don't say them. <laughs> Look, she was almost caught. What's the matter with you? What do you mean? You're looking awful jumpy. Am I? What? What the hell? I'm not aware of it. That'll be the day when something in this place makes me jump. You've got your coat on? Yes. You're going out? Yes. No need to ask where. Where else is I? You could go to the church instead. Church? Join the choir. Choir? You were always complaining that you've never got anything to do. You used to have a fine singing voice. Listen, Agnes, some folk are just not right for religion. Some folk are just constitutionally incapable of bending a knee, and I'm one of them. When will you be back? I don't know. It depends if I meet anybody. <laughs> or you'll meet down at that pub and a bunch of unemployables just like yourself. And don't be late for dinner. Are you making dinner? No. You know what I mean. We'll punch out some pizzas. Pizzas? I thought you liked pizza. Do you want to know something? I would do anything for a good old-fashioned plate of Scotch broth. Why don't you do any cooking like you used to? No point in cooking when the food's already cooked, just ready for the order. And you lose your impetus. Uh, what's keeping this bloody thing? Language, Joseph, language. A plate of Scots broth. And a door with a handle. It's a displacement activity. She often does that when she's agitated. What is it supposed to do? Take the dust away. But the extractors do that. It doesn't make any difference anyway. It's not plugged in. Going up to the club? Yes. Well, don't be late. Why don't you stop? You know how he gets. What business is it of his when I come in? He worries about you. Oh, if anybody tries to mug me, I press my blooper. That lot will go to be dead by the time you find you. Oh, they will. Thank you for switching on my voice function. What can I do for you? I'm worried. Would you like to play tennis? No, that's okay. I'll study some more.
One of these nights, you'll end up in trouble. Must be dark by now. We were supposed to eat hours ago. Do you want me to get you something? We'll eat together like we always do. That's him coming down now. Not before time. Was something wrong? You know fine well something's wrong. I'm sorry, I'm not telepathic. None of your lip. I'm warning you. What time of night is this to come home at? Well, I don't know. What time is it? Get that damn thing away from me. Oh, that's it. Resorts to violence. Been down the pub, have we? And you listen to me, sonny boy. No, you listen to me for a change. You think you're a big man, don't you? What, father of the household? Just because you can throw your weight around, you think you're the boss. But that's the only thing that gives you precedence in this family. Gary. It's okay, Annie. He doesn't understand me. I've told you before, he's a dinosaur. <laughs> you are not the breadwinner. I am an Annis. Now, you and my mother both fill your faces at our expense. Gary. So in future, I will come home whenever I flaming well please. Stop it! Stop it! What's going on? For God's sake, Anne, punch us with some pizzas. Then Thoth stood up and spoke to the rest of them. I see the moon, he said. Now I see it in one place, then another. The moon does not stay in one place in the sky. And from its journey, we say when we shall meet after many months of hunting. Now let us make great stones to stand to mark moon's journey. And where there is no stone, great moon shall shine, and where her light touches the earth, there shall we lay a stone on which to make our sacrifice. Gary. Such, said the computer, were my origins within the tribes of man. Here. Yeah. I'm sorry I hit you, son. But he shouldn't goad me. You know, I'm like when my temper's up. What kept you tonight, anyway? I was at the club. But the club finishes at seven, so you can all get home at a reasonable hour. But it's what happens afterwards is interesting. What happens afterwards? Oh, I see. <laughs> so you were chatting up the birds, were you? The what? The lassies. What are you talking to girls? Yeah, there were some girls there as a house, but we were discussing the signals. What signals? The signals they've received in Ohio Observatory, from outer space. Mm, flying saucers. No, just signals. Proof that somewhere out there is intelligent life and that it's trying to contact us. What's it saying? Well, well nobody knows. How do they know it's saying anything? <laughs> well, it's saying something, all right. Now, that's the fourth satellite to be knocked off course this year. There's something going on up there. There's something going on in my back. Ah, I'm away to my bed. I'll leave you to sort it. I'll put off the light for you. Oh, that's OK. I can manage. So I said to him, what kept you, son? Were you chatting up the birds? You know, he hadn't a clue as to what I was talking about. You can't expect the boy to understand all that you say to him. You're that old-fashioned, the way you speak. It's as if you're speaking a different language. But even when I explained that birds meant lassies, he still wasn't interested. All he could talk about was signals from outer space. Young people are different now. Some things never change. He should be taking an interest in women. I know I did at his age. Aye. Well, don't judge him by your standards. <laughs> I was a bit of a lad in my day, eh? <laughs> and you's are the one that should know about that. Stop your nonsense, Joe. Oh. Put out the light and get to sleep. What's the matter? My back is killing me. Well, lie down, then. Damn Worse when I'm flat. Take a painkiller, then. You know, I hate pills. Well, I've already had my sleeping pills. So if you're sitting up, you're on your own. That's nothing unusual. 
shouldn't have hit him. Shouldn't have hit him. Gary, I've told you before. No reading at the table. I don't see why no. It's rude. Whatever that means. You can always tell a gentleman by his manners. All right, you two. Stop your bickering. I have an announcement to make. An announcement? What about? I have decided. What have you decided? Do you know what I think this family needs? A sudden death. Well, go on then. Don't keep us in suspense. I like suspense. Makes life interesting. This family needs a holiday. A holiday? A holiday. A holiday. What is a holiday? What's a holiday? <laughs> a holiday is, well, in the good old days when we used to work, a holiday was, well, we'd go away somewhere. You know, Agnes, tell her what a holiday is. A holiday is a chance to relax and take things easy. Put your feet up, lie about all day in the sun and do just nothing. Sounds boring. It doesn't sound much different from what we do at the moment. Apart from the sun, and we've got a sunray lamp for that. Nowadays, holidays are different. Look, see, I got these from a fella in a pub. They're called the Holiday Brochures. <laughs> Listen to this. Ecology. Where's that? Ecology. Hmm? An anti-pollution holiday. Spend two weeks cleaning a despoiled beach. Protective masks and clothing supplied. Don't like the sound of that. Or this self-awareness holidays. Gestalt groups and individual counselling. Greet each day with a primal scream. No, don't much fancy holiday camps. Oh, what about this one? Erotica. A seductive and stimulating holiday. Relive the seediness of sinful Soho. Remember we went to Soho once, Joe? We had spaghetti. Hey, how about this one, Dad? It's called work. Dig holes, spread tar, clock into a factory. Work a Ford assembly line, scrub like a housewife, starve like a peasant. Hmm. Let me see that. A working holiday. Take your family on a working holiday with the Ministry of Defence. Hard manual labor. We guarantee you'll break some sweat. It's a special kind of camp run by the military. Yeah? Where is it? Helensboro. That's where all the missiles are. Yeah, it's an underwater defense base. You get to it by submarine. Submarine? You won't catch me going down in one of those things. Where's your spirit of adventure, Mum? I remember when I was a little girl, we went to Helensboro once for a holiday, but the nearest we ever got to go under the water was going in for a paddle. How much does it cost? That's the amazing thing. It doesn't cost us anything. As a matter of fact, they pay us. Collect your wages at the end of each week in a genuine pay packet. Real work? Sounds incredible. <laughs> I sounds too good to be true. Oh, you don't think we should go then? No, I think we should. Well, I'd like to see the missiles at close range. And? Yes, I suppose so. If work's all that you say it should do some good. Agnes? I don't know. What don't you know? I don't know that I want to go to Helmsborough. It's too far. It's only 20 miles. And I wouldn't want to be away from home too long. Why not? Well, there's all the plants. The plants are in automatic sprinklers. They can look after themselves. I suppose. Oh, but you know, a holiday. The very thought makes me nervous. I mean, it's going to be so strange. But don't you understand, Agnes? This isn't an ordinary holiday. We're going to get the chance to do some work. See this here? This is for holding your tea and your sugar. You put your tea in one end and your sugar in the other. Then when you want to brew up, you drink it out of this. I'm beginning to worry about this holiday. It's an experience. It's the fact that it's a defense establishment that worries me. I don't really approve of nuclear weapons. It doesn't matter whether you approve of them or not, you're committed to them. Depends who. You live in a family, don't you? And a home with four walls around you. Well, that's a defence system. National defence is just a logical extension. Yes, but it doesn't have to be nuclear weapons. What do you expect them to use? Bows and arrows?
Ministry of Defense, Civilian Work Center. Authorized personnel and permit holders only. This area is zoned under the Official Secrets Act. Would you? And international defense communications were disrupted last night as the United States officially confirmed that they have now lost all contact with their satellite, Space Eagle. Something has happened to knock out the Space Eagle sensors. At the moment, we're not exactly sure what. It uh, could have been done from the Earth by using lasers. But what has happened to Space Eagle seems more basic than that. In a human, the equivalent would be a frontal lobotomy. Ah, yes, the new arrivals. You must be the Brown family. We've been expecting you. Welcome to Seabed 6 Underwater Defense Station. I trust you had a pleasant journey and that you enjoyed your voyage in a nuclear submarine. Don't worry about the pressure. Your body will soon adjust. Thank you, sailor. My name is Smiley, Sergeant Smiley of His Majesty's Combined Forces, known affectionately as the Coms, or sometimes even the Long Johns. This is my assistant, able-bodied Andrews, and very able-bodied she is, as you can see. We're not afraid to have a bit of a laugh and a joke down here. It helps to keep up morale, if you see what I mean. After all, it's a very serious job we have to do. It is my honored duty to welcome you to CND, Civilian National Defense, and to congratulate you on deciding to participate in your country's defense effort. We came here to work. Quite so, and work you shall. Fingers to the bone, back till it's breaking. Work, work, and more work. We are not ashamed to be nostalgic down here. As for those of you who have never worked before, well, what can I say? You're about to learn the secret, the meaning of toil and sweat of brow. Work, work, and more work. And what will this work be like? It will be bloody awful. You'll wonder how anyone could ever have lamented the passing of such a torment. And yet later, when you are safely home, in all your security and leisure, you will look back on these days of graft and bull with fondness, and might even yearn for their return. Now then, before we clock you in, are there any questions? Yes, I have a question. Yes, little girl? This work will be doing. Will it be alienated labor? What kind of labor? Alienated. Alienated labor? Hmm? never heard of it. Oh, well, in my kind of job, you're always learning and you can never know too much, can you not, when there are matters of defense involved? Right then, since there are no further questions, let's get you started, Andrews. new generation, the mini-nukes, computerized intelligence, laser accuracy, nuclear warheads, fly close to the speed of light, so small not even the satellites can pick them up, the barracudas of the weaponry world. Aren't you privileged? Your job is to unload this lot from up here, down to here, then spit and polish them, and then put them back again. A simple set of tasks to get you started, Andrews is here to advise. I hope you'll be happy in your work, and I'll leave you to get on with it. Okay, let's get working. <laughs> That's what we came here for, isn't it? <laughs> ah. Ooh. Hey, Gary, catch! <laughs> hey, uh, don't drop that. It might explode an impact. in that boy. That's the product of a day's hard toil. Better get used to it. Your skin will toughen up in time. Look at mine. That leather. So my feet are killing me. Years since I wore boots. This place the devil is to sleep in. It's disgusting. Ah, I've slept in worse. You're too soft. That's your trouble. Good evening all. Hope I'm not disturbing you. Just thought I'd pop in and see how you were doing. Oh, oh, oh so it's feet in the basin time, is it, eh? Uh, Nothing like it, is that? It's been years. Excuse me. Any time, my boy? Are you responsible? Is it anyone these days? That's the question. I mean, for this place, for this accommodation you've given us. Don't you like it? 
The walls are damp, there's no proper light, there's no central heating, there's no air conditioning. You're on holiday, Gary. What do you expect? There isn't even a computer terminal. It's horrible. Oh, no, don't tell me. The computer baby, was he? Yes. They never lived through any wars, did they? No, certainly not. This is what is called your Bothy class accommodation. It is meant to reproduce the sort of places the Irish Navy lived in when he first came to Britain to dig the roads and lay the bricks. People are burnt to death in places like this. Have you lost something, Mother? Uh, no, I haven't lost anything. I thought you were looking for something in the case. No, I wasn't looking for anything. So what were you doing then? What do you mean? What was I doing? What were you doing in the case? I was looking for something. That's what I said. Oh, mind your own business, can't you? I don't have to explain myself to you. Anyway, it's time you were asleep. It's long past your bedtime. <laughs> and stop playing that damn thing. It's grating on my nerves. Sorry. Just get to sleep. Okay. When are you going to sleep? When I'm good and ready. Well, I shouldn't take too long about it, if I were you. We're going to be scrubbing floors tomorrow. Isn't that exciting? Hell of a exciting. I wish I was at home with my earphones on watching the telly. You stop. It's pointless. What? That's work. It's pointless. Of course that is. That's how work's supposed to be. Come on. We were doing well together there, which is how it should be. Men working together. You and me. We've never been like that before. Never had the chance to. Come on, boy. Let's do some more. That's what we came here for, isn't it? No, that's what you came here for. Oh, look at my hands. They're all cuts and blisters. I'll never be able to use a keyboard again. Now, you move them yourself if you're so keen. Oh, come on! Well, what's the matter? Are you scared you can't manage on your own? A big man like me, of course I can. Aye, ah, a big man like you. But a workman needs a workmate. That's part of the fun of the thing. And the dignity. It's crap. Please, son. Oh, God. Everything okay? I don't think I heard anybody call a tea break. I suppose we should get on with
while they gave you scrubbing to do? Yes. I was rather hoping they might give me a chance at scrubbing too. I mean, just the experience. Did you do much scrubbing when you were young? Indeed, I didn't know it. Never scrubbed a floor before this day. My father, God rest him, would never have allowed it. You seem to have missed out on a lot of work experience. But they do say that in those days, work wasn't nearly as highly thought of as it is now. There was the work ethic, but that's a different thing. Do you think father subscribes to the work ethic? I found the whole experience today most interesting. That amount of concentrated effort in a prolonged period of time. The limitations on physical freedom and suppression of impulse involved. I found milking the cows pleasurable in and of itself. And I suspect that agricultural work had a less constricting effect on the human sensibility. I was most intrigued by the relationship between the physical work I was doing and the pattern of my thoughts. What sort of analysis did you come up with? Anne, dearest, would you please just go to sleep? Yes, Mother. Mouthful of beer to quench the thirst after a hard day's work. Oh, by God, I remember I used to get parched. Hooter would blow at five o'clock. It was on with the jackets and straight to the boozer. Pint a heavy, please. <laughs> Lefty sit down, my back's killing me. Where did you work? The docks. I was made redundant in 1980. After that, well, I tried working in a pub, but I was too clumsy. Then I went into partnership with this fellow. He used my redundancy money. He did the dirty on me, and that was that. I haven't worked since. And yet, despite the fact I sit round the house all day doing nothing, my back's still killing me. You know your problem. Oh, what? You're all tensed up. Uh, maybe you're right. You know what causes that? No, oh, what? You're afraid. What am I afraid of? Everything. You don't feel afraid. Exactly. You've been afraid for so long, you've forgotten what it is you're scared of. Don't even notice it anymore. Listen, I want you to try and imagine. See if this rings any bells, okay? Okay. Once upon a time, you used to walk along streets, right? Right. Then I want you to imagine it's a warm, sunny day in the middle of summer, and it's the afternoon. Can you remember that far back? Yes, I remember. Right, so there you are, you're walking along, carefree, carrying a bottle of lemonade. The sun is shining. Past rows of houses, trees growing flowers in neat gardens, birds chirping, children playing. It feels as if it will be there forever. Suddenly, you hear a strange sound in the sky. What's that, you think? You look up. And then, you feel it. It explodes in the middle of your chest. It takes your breath away. It undoes your stomach from its hinges. What is that, I feel? Your fear. My fear? The moment passes and you feel relief. What was a strange sound in the sky? It was only a jet. So you walk on along the street. Everything seems back to normal. But the fear remains. It settles inside you and wraps its tentacles around your bones. I still don't get it. Why is that I'm afraid of? The Holocaust. The nuclear Holocaust. Never give a second thought. I mean, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Fear and tension have prospered and grown throughout the century till now, 1999. We are on the brink. We stand on a narrow ledge on the highest slope of time. We feel dizzy. A fatal sense of self-destruction pulls us down to disaster. Vertigo. 
The fear of the Holocaust possesses us. And that, my friend, is why you have a pain in your back. I think it's just lumbago. That's what you call it now, when it's just a back. Wait till it attacks your heart, what we call it then. Ah. Uh -huh. Daddy, how do you see you're terrified? Don't try to deny it now. Accept your fear. That is the beginning of recovery. Would you like another beer? You are crazy. That's right, son. I'm crazy, but don't knock it. So will you be when you're my age. Everyone needs a little bit of crazy. Being crazy is the only thing that keeps me sane. Did I ever tell you that I was a qualified masseur? And where do you think you're going? Those two drive me crazy. Is there anywhere else I can sleep? Or somewhere to sleep? Sure, I can fix that. In here. These are my quarters. a great earthquake and the sun became black and the moon became as blood and the stars of the heaven fell unto the earth and every mountain and island was moved out of its place for the great day of his wrath has come and who shall be able to stand? The sun became black. And the moon became like blood. Oh, Christ, I could do with that drink. Close your eyes, relax, give in to it. Let me walk you over. That's better. That's it. Look at that mighty back. Those massive shoulder muscles. They don't make men like you no more. No, sir. What's the matter? Never seen a woman's body before? Yes, of course I have. Often. Ah, oh, your sister's. She looks as if she has a very nice body. No, not my sister's. I took physiology and sex education units from the computer. I and I've seen a porn video. Not the same as the real thing. Well, it looks pretty much the same from here. Oh, does it? Well, just you listen to me, you little smart-ass. That is your whole problem. All you know is what the computer has taught you. you don't know anything about life. Lumberjacking today, Dad. I wonder if we'll get you to roll any locks. Mm -hmm. And what are you women up to this morning? Agnes, what's the matter with her? She looks as if she's got a hangover. A hangover? But she doesn't drink. That's all you know. She's been drinking like a fish for months. It's about time you knew. Drinking? Agnes, drinking? Is this true? Yeah, she's got a really chronic problem. Why didn't anybody tell me? Well, we didn't know what to do. Mr. Objectivity here wanted to study it, so I'm telling you now. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Possessed you? Nothing possessed me. Well, what did you have to go and tell him that for? 
about time he knew the truth. In fact, it's about time this whole family faced the truth about itself. All sitting there with your depressions and your guilty secrets. What a mess. Suddenly I couldn't stand it any longer. When Mother ran off to be sick, that was it. He's got enough problems without that. She couldn't have gone on drinking like that forever. Anyway, what makes you so sympathetic all of a sudden? What were you up to last night? I wasn't up to anything. Oh, yes, you were. I could tell from that silly grin you had in your face when you came into breakfast. You're positively frisky. I'm just enjoying my holiday. What about the old man? He's like a bear we are so red this morning. I wonder what he and Smelly got up to together. Don't you know? You share a room with him. Ah, but I was asleep. Mm-mm. You able-bodied Andrews run for cover. I don't really feel like working today. I do. I'm raring to go. Good morning. Anne, would you come with me, please? Agnes. Agnes, why didn't you say? Why didn't you tell me you had problems? Hey, 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 watch what you're doing. You'll kill yourself, come here. I'll show you how to handle a hump, right? Take it with a shot, right? Measure that out. Come on, follow right, me. Right, right, right. That's it, right? Come on. Now then, take it, take it. Act it, come on. Like what? Like that. Act it. Slide it in the shaft. Get your weight behind it. Come on. Welcome to Seabed 6 Computer Medicare. Please introduce yourself. My name is Agnes Brown. I am sorry, but your voice is not registering clearly enough. Could you please speak louder? My name is Agnes Brown. Mm, you're doing fine on the test so far, Anne. Your rating is very high, and I shall easily be able to recommend you for military service. You should seriously think about it. It's a very good life for a woman. And now we come to what we call the ultimate test. Have you got what it takes to become a soldier? There. What is it? A rabbit. Oh, yes, of course. What am I supposed to do with it? Kill it. Come on, old man, what's the matter? All this work proven too much for you. You must be joking. Look here, I'll tell you what, I'll race you. Let's see where you can split the most logs. Wait a minute, are you challenging me? Yeah. Oh, okay, sonny boy. Let's get ready. Cracking. Right. I'll put the question to you once again, Mrs. Brown. Would you agree that you have a drink problem? All right. All right, so I'll admit it. Yes, I take a drink. So what? And when did it become a crime? I'm not saying it's a crime. I'm only trying to help you. But I don't need help. Lots of people enjoy a drink. Why shouldn't I? When you got here, you needed a drink so badly that you stole to get one, knowing full well you would get caught. I would call that a problem. Or don't you agree? Yes, yes, I agree. <laughs> Just give me peace. <laughs> there. Are you satisfied? Please, Mrs. Brown, trust me. My attitude is completely sympathetic. I am your friend. I am here to help you. I only want you to talk to me. Tell me all about yourself. I am a willing ear. All right. You asked for it. All you need. 
need to do is push the button. I told you, don't ask me again. I'm not going to kill it, and that's final. So you don't have what it takes. That's right. I don't have what it takes. You've got to take life to know life, Anne. That's the funny thing about it. But if you're not prepared to know, then just go home and keep your hair in bunches. in the middle of a public house with ribbons and balloons tied in my hair <laughs> and bells on my wrist. Oh, they did me proud, so they did. All the girls gathered round about me and banging on their pots and pans and shouting to all the men, <laughs> come and kiss the pretty bride. She's going to be married tomorrow. She's going to be married. <laughs> I think I've killed him. Sounded lovely, Anne. Father, you're awake. Yes, I'm awake. Mother, Gary, come quickly. Everything looks so bright and clean. It's like a brand new world. And you know what it was that wakened me? I heard music. But it was fantastic music, like I'd never heard before. It seemed to go right inside me. And, well, the sound was like, kind of like, drops of rain. And where each drop fell inside my body, it seemed to make energy. And the next thing was the smell. This really strong, healthy smell. I couldn't place what it was, but it reminded me of something. Then I remembered. It was the smell of earth. That's what I was smelling. The earth from those plant pots there. And I could smell the green of the plants like I was smelling all the grass that ever grew, the leaves of every tree. And between that and the music, I haven't felt so good in years. I was back in the land of the living. I feel terrific. Oh, Joe. Joe, it was terrible. For a whole half hour, we thought you were dead. You were in a coma. Medics said it was due to cybernetic agraphy. We've been injecting you with vitamins to keep you going. How long was I out then? Three days. They wanted to take you to hospital, but Gary wouldn't hear of it. So, you never got to finish your holiday. I'm sorry about that. We'd all had enough of it by that time anyway. 
Holy smell. Still can't get used to it. It's like something cooking. I'm starving. Oh, it's good. I'll have to put the gas on seat. If it's boiling, just turn it down and let it simmer. What's this? You back at the cooking? Yeah, I'm back at the cooking. I should have conked out long ago. Oh. <laughs> Makes a change to see him laughing. said was wrong with me. No, I don't listen to them. That's just their computer talk. I knew what was wrong with you the minute I set eyes on you. What was that? Do you need me to tell you? It was the same as happened to your father when he was your age. A heart attack? Exactly. Just a minor one, but enough to give you a warning. You're going to have to do just like your father did and take things easy. Yes, Agnes. I suppose you're right. The Soviet Union has issued a report confirming that at least six of its satellites have been bumped or otherwise interfered with in the past year. The United States has disclaimed any knowledge or responsibility for the occurrences. It is now thought that some outside agency is involved. Meantime, the dramatic increase in signals received from outer space continues with the signals becoming stronger and clearer by the day. Urgent talks to consider the matter are due to begin next week under the auspices of the United Nations. It is expected that all of the major world powers will be involved. You know something, Gary? I could really get into this old-fashioned way of kicking. Give me a chance to bash things about. Gary? Hmm? You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. For a moment there, you look just like Father. I was remembering something. Maybe that's why. You know, it's a weird thing. What is? Well, before the holiday, there was nothing to remember. Now there is something. The holiday. I have a feeling I'll be remembering it for the rest of my life. I didn't notice. Probably not. Will you be using the computer in the next B file? I don't think so. Good. That soup will just take off about another ten minutes. So I'll just go through and see it. See what? The computer. What do you want to see the computer for? I feel like having a bit of an answer. Tell him that Joe's come back to life. I'm sure he'll be most interested. Computers are all the same. Most concerned and very considerate. Every last one's a gentleman. <laughs> 